Well, I'll tell you one thing I've noticed. This time last year, uh, when I was talking to people over the summer, they would be saying, please, not another election. Now what I get, if somebody offers an opinion on that general question, it's, uh, when are you going to have an election to get rid of these guys? It's very interesting. In just one year, there's certainly a discontent in the land. And so that when an election comes, I don't think many people will say, that's too soon, we don't need one, we shouldn't have had one. Well, first of all, only in Canada could you go out and say that a party that has twice as many people who don't support them as who do is somehow holding a lead and is able to be the government. It's ridiculous. You've got two Canadians over here that don't agree with this government, and you've got one that does, and yet they get to govern with 100, virtually 100% of the power in terms of the executive branch of government, appointing people to different posts, gradually transforming uh, our, uh, our, our public polity. Uh, it's ridiculous. And so, to me what's interesting is that the two old parties are barely able to get 50% between them now of the support of Canadians. What that says to me is that there are a lot of Canadians whose uh, minds are open to some alternatives. I think a lot of people started to vote for the Reform Party, which then merged into the, with, the, with the Progressive Conservatives, uh, because they felt that government was becoming too remote from them. I think Stephen Harper's in danger of uh, being perceived by some of the people who used to vote Reform as being too remote from them. And so I think there's the beginnings of a bubbling up of, uh, of concern about where uh, Stephen Harper has gone. Where's the old Stephen Harper, who would not allow uh, patronage appointments, but now he's stacked the Senate with conservative bagmen. Even, even, even the guy in charge of the conservative campaign no longer has to be paid by conservative donors. He's now paid by the taxpayers, two-thirds of whom don't even support the conservatives. It's pretty good leverage. I guess I could admire the chutzpah of the guy. But at the end of the day, uh, I think a lot of Canadians are going to react to this and say, hang on, you know, this isn't what we were promised. Would Stephen Harper walk down to the Governor General like he did two years ago, break his own fixed election date law and say, uh, I, I want to go to the people now because I feel like it, because I think I can win a majority, because the other guys are weak at the moment and I like kicking them while they're down. Um, that's always possible, so we have to be ready for that. And my guess is there's a debate going on within the Conservatives about that. Uh, we'll be ready because I think Canadians uh, want us to be ready. They want to know they've got that choice. And it'll be a choice that really focuses on some of the insecurities and challenges that a lot of Canadian people are facing, whether it's economic security, whether it's um, um, education, uh, whether it's uh, um, the environment whether it's what's going to happen in Afghanistan, all these issues, we're, we'll be ready.